So I've got a dance analogy for, for oh. the banking sector here. Well, so, is it dad so dancing? In Europe, yes. in Europe, what we've got is old-fashioned tea dancing, right? right. Uh, where the couples, um, they fill out a dance card and every now and again you swap partners and you just see how it goes, right? So Unicredit, apparently talking about Commerce Bank last year, uh, now apparently the rumour is SockGen. Who knows what happens here? Everybody knows that they need to pair up, that we're overbanked in Europe, that there are challenges around profitability, capitalization, NPL payments, but nobody's quite sure who to pair up with and who will get approval at a European level, both from the regulators and from governments. You move to the United States, these guys are doing disco, you know, they're out there doing their own thing, they're taking business from European banks, they are setting the moves themselves and they are benefiting from the fact that the Americans cleaned up their NPLs, they shut down the smaller banks, Profitability has returned. M and A, M and A, yeah, moves, moves, man. Disco, moves. tea dance, and disco. <laughs> Look, mate, let me take your analogy and run because with it. Because all the all the deals have been done. These banks are in much better health in the United States than they are here, and they're just getting on and they're making money. Look, look, look. Here, here's your problem. <laughs> tea dancing, disco. You're stuck in the wrong century. Basically, you've got a whole generation of people, and I might even sound like Arjun or Karen here, in the mosh pit doing their own form of dancing, and it's not structured like disco or your tea dance. Right. It's called fintech. Did you not just hear what's going on there? Look, I'm going to show you my phone, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to show you my... No, this is not for air, OK? I'm going to show you my phone. Yeah. See that? Gosh. There's my there's my bank. Yeah. There's my other bank. Right. And there's the, an, an app, ah. which is neither bank, yeah? Yes, yeah. Do the that company app, know you've got that? That app allows me to transfer money at current market exchange rate. Yes. I can ping it to one of my spendthrift children anywhere in the world, in any currency, at a market price straight away. Yes. Why can't I do it on first two of those apps on, with my banks? There's so much low-hanging fruit that these banks could do if they looked at themselves rather than worrying about mega deals which very rarely paid off historically for European banks as well. I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit looking at your own banking operation rather than someone else's first. Maybe. Maybe. But why aren't these apps breaking through in a more significant way? They are because breaking they through. Don't have the, the volume scale of the users is going And they don't the... have the trust. And you know what? And we have inertia in this They're sector. getting bought out. They're getting bought out as well. Uh, Hey, what do I know? And also, there's a lot of banks in Europe who are doing incredibly well. You said all European banks yeah. laggardly looking for deals. Not all of them are looking for deals. They're just getting on with it. Well, we'll come back. Uh, we'll uh, talk uh, some more. Uh, I, don't, I don't buy the mosh pit, though. I mean, because the regulators are controlling the dance.